Hello, this video is on dynamics of simple harmonic motion. This section is page 10 of your lecture notes. In this section, we're going to apply concepts from dynamics to understand that in order for an object to move in simple harmonic motion, there must be a resulting force. And this, res this resultant restoring force must be proportional and opposite in direction to the displacement. You, we can consider a mass spring system at position 1, at equilibrium position. The downward weight of the force, the downward weight is balanced by the upward tension. So at this position, tension is equal to mg. At this position, there is no restoring force because tension is equal to mg. There is no net force. At position 2, when the mass is displaced downwards, the tension is increased by a value of kx, where k is the Hooke's constant or spring constant. So now tension is larger than the weight mg by a value of kx. So there is a restoring force, there's a net restoring force of kx upwards. And the direction and it's upwards because it is trying to restore the object back to the equilibrium position. The same argument goes for position 3. At position 3, the mass is displaced upwards. And because of that, the tension now is decreased by a value of kx. And t now is smaller than mg by kx. So again, there is a restoring force of magnitude kx acting downwards. And again, the direction is to restore equilibrium. So you can see that at all three positions, including even position 1, where x is equal to 0, displacement, x equal to 0, you can see that the force is always, the net force is always given by the, the value of kx. And the negative sign shows that the direction of f is always opposite to the direction of the displacement. So you can see here that the net restoring force for a case study like a mass spring system, the net restoring force is proportional to the displacement x as well as always opposite in direction. Let's look at example 3.1 for illustration. Example 3.1, we are told that the loudspeaker, the diaphragm of the loudspeaker is undergoing simple harmonic motion. The frequency is 440 hertz and the maximum amplitude, maximum displacement of the maximum amplitude is 0.75 millimeter. The mass of the diaphragm is 28 milligrams. So determine angular frequency. From section 1, terms and definition, we learn that angular frequency is defined to be the product of 2 pi times the frequency. So just multiply 2 pi with 440 hertz. We have 2.76 times 10 to the power of 3 radians per second. For part B, we want to find maximum speed. From section 2, we learn that the ma maximum value of velocity is given by omega x0. Omega from the previous part we already have. And given that the max the amplitude is 0.75 millimeter, so take note of the time step of minus 3 here, we will get 2.1 meter per second. We also learn from section 2 that the maximum value for acceleration is omega square x0. Do the relevant substitution, we get 5.71 times 10 to the power of 3 meter per second square. For the third part, where we need to sketch the force 
So this is the part where this section comes in, dynamics comes in. So force by Newton's second law is simply the mass multiplied by the acceleration. So if we require maximum force, that will correspond to maximum acceleration. So use the previous answer from part C, multiply by the mass, take note is 28 milligram. So in terms of kg, it's 10 to the power of minus 6. So that will be the value for the 0 0.16 Newton will be the value for the maximum uh, force. The question asks for a graph. How does the force varies with displacement? So as you can see, the graph, the shape of the graph is a negative, it's a straight line graph with negative gradient. And this gradient is constant. That's why it's a straight line graph to the origin. And the gradient is given by mass times omega squared. So the graph of force against displacement is similar to the graph for acceleration displacement, except you have to multiply the value of mass. This is in accordance with Newton's second law. So to summarize, in this section, we talk about dynamics of symbol of motion. We learn that in order for an object to move in symbol of motion, there must always be a restoring force and the, this force must always be opposite in direction and proportion in magnitude to the displacement. The next video or the next section will be on energy in simple motion. See you in the next video.